I saw this uh, almost a month ago now, I think, or three weeks ago now, and it's really stayed with me. And I think one of the reasons that it has stayed with me so much is that uh, I hadn't heard too much about it before going in. Um, it's that's the beauty of the film festival, you know, you see movies that you don't know anything about. And, you know, I assumed it would be a Monty Python movie, but a slightly, maybe a slightly, you know, 21st century twist on it. And it's not that. It's a much different thing. It's a, it's, it really is uh, the story of uh, a person battling demons in a lot of ways and battling demons that I that I didn't know I mean I knew that Grant, he, he was an alcoholic and I knew he'd come out of the closet at a time when it wasn't that easy to come out of a closet in public life um, what I was really fascinated by was the idea of fame being kind of an airlock for him and that whole sort of uh, process in the film can you tell me just a little bit about um, your thoughts on See, this is a, this is a question for Graham Chapman, I guess. I realize as I <laughs> yeah. watch into By the way, when you said at the beginning, if that was your write-up, we'd be totally happy. To <laughs> exactly that, and we actually don't need to say anything. You're totally summed up. You've got it. <laughs> what? You should be writing for the Hollywood. I, that's right. <laughs> um, well, um, let's take a different track then. Um, tell me a little bit about the idea then of, of deciding to use 14 different animators. This is a question you've probably well, been asked a lot, but I like the I, I love the idea of it, but tell me a little bit about I think, it. I think really when me and Bill were doing various documentaries, we, 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 was, we started experimenting with, with using different animation. Um, just in the documentaries to, to sort of, you know, and in almost the truth, our documentary series, we had these kind of different vignette moments that we sort of used. Um, but we were really looking for something that, 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 that would, it would have a real sense, a real creative purpose behind it. Um, and then when Jeff came to us and we got discussing about this idea, we came with the audio book and, and we, we, we worked out that we could create scenes and bring Graham back. The book itself, because it goes into such incredible flights of fancy, it goes into all these different worlds, within worlds, within worlds, within dreams, within <laughs> dreams. We realised that it was the perfect thing for us to, to use, to, 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 to segue in and out of these different places. We had no idea if it would work, but we, we just thought, go for it. Well, my idea, as I was watching it, my thought was that uh, it was a way to visually and wordlessly kind of capture the... Uh, spirit of anarchy that the Python guys had uh, was so prevalent in their work without going Monty Python all over the place. Well, it's because a lot of the animators are too young to remember Monty Python or didn't necessarily know anything about Monty yeah, Python. Yeah. So the casting process was quite interesting because there were there were some who there were some sections that we knew immediately. Yes, that's perfect for drying out the oil on glass thing. We saw what right. he'd done. He'd done a little film about asylum seekers of the voiceover and then going through their heads. That was perfect. There were other sections where um, there were people whose styles we liked, but we didn't know what section to put them in. So some of them pitched for two or three sections, and then we had this kind of dating service of matching up <laughs> sections to think. We had about forty different animation companies that we were looking at. Right. And we were going through, and then we went through and said, "Okay, they would be good for this. They would be good for that." Right. right. But I think, I think, uh, yeah. I mean, in terms of the actual, sorry, what was your question again? Well, just uh, of capturing. I, I thought it was a really interesting way because you can't ignore Monty Python. Mm -hmm. You don't want to make a Monty Python film. And you don't want it to all be about the birth of Monty Python, you know, or whatever. He but writes very little about Monty Python in the book. Well, he does. The, and, but I, I, I love... Because he had this amazing life beyond Python. Which exactly. And, and the, the, the amazing life, uh, you, you certainly cover in this, but you have to pay oh, a, 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 sort of homage to the spirit of, yes. of do you know Monty what I Python. Said, do, do that's it. I mean, I think uh, for us, it's having kind of now worked on, on the documentary and so on, we, we've also seen... It, people try to emulate it mm -hmm. and that was the biggest thing that was, it's, it literally is a fine line to tread you're literally treading it like this you're thinking you just go there you're trying too hard and right. you go there you're so it was it, it was really important to us that it that it was it was really graham's writing mm -hmm. being visual, but but obviously there is echoes of the tv series really a meaning of life coming through the concept behind it you know sketches moving things moving from all different mm -hmm. places so that concept's there but there's no way we were ever going to try and create Python. Right. Yeah, I mean, and I think the moments where we've, we've, we've used Python moments... Are assets, yeah. Assets, are, and, and when, we t when we're talking about Python, when we use all the Python as monkeys, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like we're, we've, we've set it away from the rest of the thing by 
portraying them all as monkeys, and 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 I think that is uh, that was a conscious effort to try and go, okay, the, you know, Python was a big part of his life, but this isn't really about that. Yeah. See, the, what what I the way I see it, it's like um, you know the musical Wicked. Yeah. I mean, it's a terrible musical. I wouldn't recommend it. For anybody, <laughs> but that idea. Of, he loved it. We, we all. <laughs> I, I I I was involved in it. <laughs> Uh, I still say it's, I, I don't care. Yeah. It's a terrible, it's a terrible music. But that, co- but the idea behind it is quite in interesting. That to take a very famous story, yeah. but actually tell you what was going on behind the scenes, right. and only occasionally do the paths cross with the actual story. Right. But this is actually telling you what was going on in parallel in a parallel universe in Graham's universe while Python was going on. Would it? Uh, I guess it wouldn't really. Well, it would have been a much different film to make had you not discovered the hours of audio tape. Well, it wouldn't, wouldn't exist. Been it wouldn't have been possible. We would never have done it. We, we were never interested in doing a, a drama film, a yeah. sort of biopic, live action. Never interested in trying that. It was never going to be. And the estate had been approached many times by people wanting to do Graham. So there was a kind of a, a crop about five or six years ago of films about dead comedians. Actually, going back even to Peter Sellers and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, and, and films Peter about dead comedians. Yeah, and uh, Andy tragic. Kaufman and that sort of thing. Yeah, and yeah. Um, and the, the, the Graham's estate, particularly David Sherlock, his ex-partner, had been approached with many, many scripts. There lots of been scripts to do, and turn them down, turn them all down. But but this one is Graham himself. It is Graham. It's, it's Graham's writing. writing. It's yeah. Graham performing, and it's Graham. And I think that also made it really exciting for for them to. To be a part of, and also, it's, you know, they don't, you know, sit, doing sit down interviews about Graham, talking about Graham. Yeah. We'd covered it, we'd done it. Right. Um, it was great that they could, and also the idea of them coming in and performing again with him it actually freaked them out a bit. Well, it, well, it's funny because I, I asked your dad about that. I spoke with him uh, half an hour ago, and. I said, was it eerie? And he said, no, not really. I mean, I said, I, I, I see him all the time. And, and it's the mm. difference of being in public life, I think. You know, that he has a legacy that's easy to access. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, it's in some ways, it's probably like he's yeah, never but, gone away. But um, when you've seen, when you see Graham on camera, he's performing, even mm-hmm. in chat shows and stuff like right, that. Right. And something David said to us over breakfast this morning, actually, there's a little section, you know the section where it's the life of Brian and he's doing the voiceover, the yep. comedy voiceover, that's not in the book, that was a little bit of audio that Andre had had left over and that had never been heard from the Python right? archive. Um, wow. And it was just a bit of messing around in the studio. Right. And because it was messing around, it's Graham off duty yeah. and he's laughing and he's giggling. And, Gra- and I David, mean, some of it's on when he's doing the voice and then, he's but performed, then, he, but, and then he stops and he's at, he's, and he yeah. talks to Andre who was... Who was our sound designer on this movie? Oh wow! And, right. and he was recording Graham, and he goes, "Was that all right, Andre?" Yeah. <laughs> and it's like yeah. Yeah, David, yeah. David said the nicest thing for him was to hear Graham giggling and laughing right. again because he'd heard he'd heard that around the house. Right. Uh, you know that, that so that we, we that's as near as we get to the real Graham because when he's performing, he's always hiding behind something. There's some kind of well, I, I, I think in, in in many ways he was, uh, and your dad mentioned this to me that he was he was hiding behind lots of things, mm-hmm. hiding behind alcohol pipes uh, yeah pipes yeah you know I mean there was there was something that you know maybe that the, the idea that that you know great comedy comes from sort of great pain as well you know and the, he was hiding constantly so uh, I, I mean I, I, I'm dealing with all this footage about him and talking about him I really feel that he was hiding because he didn't know who he really was right and he thought he should know and I think that was the problem he had. He thought he should know who he was, right. and he wide about it. Yeah. And so then he thought, oh, I have to have this, I have to have a pipe, I have to have alcohol. Yeah. And it's just like, you just have to relax. And Which comes worry. back to, what was, the, what was the, your question about the fame bubble that I stand well, the fame over bu- at the beginning yeah. of this interview? Yeah, the, the, the idea that, that he was so, I mean, for, for you know, people of my generation and beyond, though, they were like gods, <laughs> these guys, and, and Graham Chapman and, and in particular for me. And and they were so famous, and yet to, to discover that he was so kind of uncomfortable with the entire idea of it was a revelation to me. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And knew the hollowness of it. In that, that last yeah. LA party section, he knew the hollowness oh, of but it. But he yeah. participated. You know, it's like, it's that's the it's weird the thing. It's the... It, it, I mean, when you've got George Harrison and Ringo Starr and Harry Nielsen ringing yeah. you up saying come out to a party tonight, obviously you're going to say yes. Yeah. Yeah. But after weeks and months of that kind of lifestyle, he, he also recognised. Yeah. Is it just that driving uh, Rolls Royces into pools with Keith Moon? <laughs> Maybe not. 
the way mm-hmm. to live your life. <laughs> that, was a great, that was a great when he when he uh, lined that Barry Cryer, uh, a British comedian, said uh, when he when he Graham, right with Graham. Yeah. found out that Keith Moon died, he was in the Angel Pub where he used to drink with, with Keith Moon, yeah. and he picked up a glass, drank half of it, and then smashed it on the floor. Wow! And he said that was for Keith. Wow. <laughs> well, apparently, actually, Keith Moon. It, it was. It's actually relevant because Keith Moon had been sitting in the pub with him some some years before and he'd just gone he'd just gone oh a bit to Barry oh I think I need to do a bit of moon he'd been really quiet <laughs> and he just picked up the glass and smashed it <laughs> but but then as they were leaving Barry caught him going to the bar and going um, can I pay for that can How I much pay for that glass, glass? <laughs> wow wow so that, well, that removes everything you've been wound up he'd yeah, be like him to stay I, 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 <laughs> I he gets too. it totally <laughs> I, I, I just saw a, a fantastic picture of uh, a Rolls Royce airborne over a swimming pool <laughs> and Keith Moon is behind the wheel <laughs> and someone had the presence of mind <laughs> to get a camera out <laughs> and stab the photo yours okay, is, I can tell that already that good. yours is the, the write up that will be circulating <laughs> <laughs> you get it totally thank you well thank you